Hello, welcome to JLo Artist YouTube channel. Today we'll be doing some drawing with graphite. So get out your pencils, your cotton swab, kneaded eraser, anything that you think you need to draw with. Have it right handy. And let's draw together. Remember, art makes life better. So thanks for being here today. Thanks for being, being willing to draw with me. Um, this elephant is great for simple shapes. So when we start out, um, we're going to start out with our number two pencil. Remember, we're holding it like this. You're not, you're not holding it like this. This is too slow. We want to hold it like this and draw on the side of our lead. This is much, much quicker. Let's go ahead and figure out where we want everything to go. And you're, you're looking at the entire sheet of paper here that you've got. And you say, well, I want to fill this whole sheet. All that I mean, you can add stuff to the bottom. The sky is, is pretty much out. There's nothing really much in the sky there. So um, I'm going to just start out. I'm going to have a little less sky and maybe a little more grass at the bottom. Give it some visual weight. So I'm just going to start out and go, well, I want the head to be kind of up towards the top there. Uh, not too far to the top. I want some, some space up there. Our elephant's kind of square anyway. This one ear that's kind of poking out. I want it clear over to the edge, almost touching that edge. Not quite, but almost. So I'm just going to put a little mark there and say that's where that goes. And then I, I can say, well, okay, that space that I have there from the ear over to this ear and up, that's about how big I want it. Now, we'll have to adjust this a little bit. And what we're doing now, just establishing our size want it really large. want to take over most of the area here. Here's his body, kind of round here, or her body, I guess. Because I think this is a female. Most of the larger elephants are female, the big tusks. There's a leg. Here's the leg back there. The, the head in the middle is this kind of light bulb shape. This long. I'm just going to put in that light bulb shape. Remember, you're drawing very lightly. That's one of the reasons why you draw with the side of your pencil. Is it's, it's light. It doesn't allow you to, to be too, too dark. And then you just adjust from there. No details here. We're just putting in shapes. Just simple, start out very simple. There's an eye over here, eye over there. I'm just marking it. I'm not I'm not drawing them in. Figuring out where it goes. I might need to make this ear a little bit bigger. You got to establish your point of reference before you get all the details in. I'm just now going around trying to get all my shapes correct. If some of the lines that you've put in before bother you, you can get rid of them with your kneaded eraser. It's so easy. That kneaded eraser, because your pencil is on the surface, you haven't ground it in yet, you can get rid of those if you want to. But eventually you're going to need pencil in there anyway because you're going to be shading. So sometimes you just can just leave it in there. So now what I'm doing is I'm just going through and very lightly putting in some of the darkest shadows. Those shadows are going to help you to get your proportions because you're going to start looking at them as compared to the other areas. When you're proportioning, that's kind of what you're doing is just comparing things.
in class, we're working on graphic enlargement, which helps us to break up our, our picture into basic shapes, basic elements, rectangles, squares. And that helps you to see your proportions too. Like I say, after a while, you don't even use that graph anymore. It just kind of comes natural. And just keep adjusting until it's the way you want it. Not gonna worry about the the bushes, the weeds, and things yet. Kind of the last thing we do because we can simplify that. Just keep adding some of those shadows to the side of your pencil. So it's light. It's on the surface. We're not going to grind that in yet. And once you get more confident with your drawing, the faster that'll go. And sometimes you'll just go, eh, I'm going to skip that number two pencil and just, just go with the, the 6B. But for right now, we want to uh, take it a little easier. So as you're drawing those shadows, just look at the shape of the shadows. Try to get those in pretty close. Your object will start to come through. It'll start to look much better as those shadow shapes kind of come through. Now I'm going to just add some of these little edges. This is also going to help me to get the positioning of the, the trunk in the center of the head. You can do the same thing with the ears. You can start adding some of these really light little edges, these little lines that are going in there. It's not so important they're exactly in the right place, but you want to get them close so that you get the, the form and the gist of your object any of the little wrinkles that you think you need you can just kind of throw those in at the side of your pencil We're not getting too detailed right now. Just trying to get the basics. Like I say, we can adjust this too. And once you've got it pretty well established the way you want it, you can clean it up, erase whatever bugs you. Because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my cotton swab and I'm going to start to blend some things. So I'm just taking that cotton swab now, and I'm just going to kind of blend in some of those. It softens the edges. I can even bring it out into any other part of this elephant because it's gray. This gives me those really soft tones.
I can clean up anything from here to still. All this stuff is still on the surface. Nothing here is difficult to erase. That's the cool part of this. I remember drawing when I was a kid how hard it was to erase everything. You know, I, I, it always bothered me that I'd make all these mistakes. I think it's about right, and then I'd go, "Oh, it's not right," and then I'd have to erase it. I didn't realize you could keep that graphite on the surface like this, and erase it easily. Nobody ever taught me that. I can now take my eraser and go in and just clean up little edges. You know, anything that I, I feel like need to clean up or add to it. This just kind of helps me get everything the way I, I want it. In a very fast way. Remember, you want to draw as fast as you can. If you're out in the African savanna, you're drawing elephants from life, those elephants are not going to stay there and pose for you. So you have to draw as fast as you can before they move. Or even in real life, you know, if you're doing life studies, people, they didn't move on you. Keep moving that tusk over. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with my proportions here. This is just direct drawing proportions. And like I say, once you get used to that graph, all of a sudden you're going to go, I don't need that graph anymore. Because you do it naturally in your head. And the cool thing is, is you'll you'll be drawing along, and all of a sudden you'll go, "Oh, yeah, that you know that works. How'd that happen?" And once you get to that point where you're happy with the proportions that you've got, that your 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 object looks like it's working out. Then you can shift over to that 6B pencil and really do some darkening. Now, you can also, um, when you shift over to that 6B, this is detail mode. You can go into the details like this and grind it into the surface. Some of those areas are really quite dark. So I'm going to go into the eyes and just kind of start with the eyes. And just, just go in there and just... Do some of those really dark areas. And you don't have to do everything. I just kind of pick out the really dark areas. And uh, knowing that I'm going to be blending and I'm going to try to smooth them out. And here, the pressure becomes important. The amount of pressure you put on your pencil either goes darker or lighter. Usually, I press a little bit heavier when I'm close to my object where the shadow is. And then as I get away from it, I kind of lighten up. And you can see that kind of happening with a lot of those shadows. They're a little darker or they're closer to the object. 
And as they come out and they turn and they get some reflected light, they get a little lighter. So you just not as much pressure. I usually work left to right just because I'm right-handed and I don't want to smear this too much. If you have a hard time with that and you get that graphite on the side of your hand because you're smearing it, um, sometimes you can put your finger somewhere, just put your little finger down, and then you kind of lift. That helps you lift up your, your hand, but then your little finger gets tired. Sometimes it's good to take like a piece of uh, tracing paper or paper towel or something, lay over the top, put your hand on it. That'll keep it from smearing too much. Still smears a little bit, but you start learning those little strategies. I sometimes will even take my pencil and go out, way out, like so I can reach over my drawing without smearing it too much. It's kind of up to you. You know, you'll learn these little strategies and you'll figure those things out. Somehow, yeah, want to keep it fairly clean. I'm just doing little gray edges, knowing that I'm going to be smearing that a little bit. And all that gray that's in there, I can smear this into it. Not worried about my edges. I didn't draw a line around everything. Because that'll happen. It's just smear it and all that stuff will just take care of itself. So anywhere I see a little darkness in there, veins, like if, if you like to draw things with veins. You just do little shadows around where the veins are and then smear it, add a little highlight, and, and you got it. I used to want to draw little lines around everything. and That's not the best way of drawing. At times you just got to leave it out. Let it go. This dark shadow under her ear kind of defines that edge of her ear. So I'm just doing that. And then there's there's all these little creases and divots in there. So you don't want a real hard line right there. Just draw that shadow. And then it'll define the edge of the ear. That shadow also defines the edge of that tusk right there. And so you may want to just do the shadow to the tusk, and then maybe a little bit on the tusk down in here. Just leave that edge out. Okay, remember in Art 1 when we were drawing with ink, we left a lot out. And I promised you that Drawing with ink would change the way you draw. Hopefully, it, it did. You, you're looking at things going, I don't need to draw that in. It's just, just an edge or something that I can leave out. Sometimes when I want things really on the surface, I'll switch around to this. This is still the faster way of drawing. So if you want some little darker areas that aren't quite as pronounced, 
use the side of your pencil. I'm going to go ahead and blend that little part. Normally, I wouldn't probably blend that until a little bit later. But I'm just going to go ahead and blend that so you can see what's going to happen. I'm going to start with my, my dark shadows. I'm going to blend those. And if they're really dark, you may want to go back into them after you've blended it. Darken them up a little bit. But what that does is not only does it smooth it out, but it puts graphite on your cotton swab so that you can draw with that cotton swab. So if I go into this now, I can draw little areas with my cotton swab. I can get all those subtle little areas of dark and light with the cotton swab. And they're soft and they're fuzzy. And if you need a sharper edge, you just come in with your kneaded eraser and just touch it up. So now some of those little light grays that are in there, I can take my cotton swab and just go in and get those light, soft edges with my cotton swab. See how fast that is? I remember trying to do this with a pencil. And it would take me forever. And I never got it really as soft as I wanted it. So that cotton swab really is kind of amazing, at least the texture that you can get with it. I can get all that light, light gray that's in there with my cotton swab, and it can be very smooth. Add a little pressure to it. You can blend out more onto it. Some of those really soft uh, wrinkles. This is, works really well for people wrinkles, like in under the eyes and things like that, where you don't want to draw a line. You use your cotton swab. You just come in, you kind of blend it. Then you take your kneaded eraser, pinch it down to a knife blade, and just touch those little edges, and you'll get those little wrinkles. And it's an amazing thing. Because nobody wants really deep wrinkles. Unless they're really deep wrinkles, then you can use line. But some of those I, I might that are fairly deep down in there. But for the rest of them, Just this little little bit with a kneaded eraser, and voila, you have it. Some of that edge right next to that shadow is really light, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just kind of leave it out, knowing that just a little bit of my cotton swab might touch it and blend it just a little bit. For the most part, I want to leave it out. And if I go too far, I can take my kneaded eraser and just touch that edge and bring it back out. The other thing is, is that as you draw, when you first lay in your graphite and you feel like it's dark enough, it probably isn't. Uh, because your eye is going to get used to the darkness that's around it. And the more you draw around it, the more your eye gets used to it. And then all of a sudden, everything is gray. You're like, oh, I need my contrast back. I got to... Pull that back out. So 
that kind of happens. Again, once you've loaded your, your cotton swab, you can use that to draw with. So like some of these little wrinkles down in here, I can take my cotton swab and just throw those in there. And voila, I have these soft little wrinkles. And I might need to get my pencil back in there to, to do some little darker shapes. But we'll wait until towards the end. I may need them, may not. More than likely, I will. That's just experience talking. You also want to increase your contrast anyway. So some of the areas that you feel are fairly light, you want to leave them maybe a little lighter than, than you see them. In other areas, you might, might not. You may want to just keep going darker. That's the cool thing about this is you get to choose. You're the artist. So then you just keep doing that everywhere, wherever you feel like you need it. Um, I'm just going to go in. Again, I'm going to go left to right just because I don't like smearing things on my hand. kind of elephant is this? African or Indian? And how do you know? Anybody know any elephant trivia? This is an African elephant. We know that because the ears are very large. Indian elephants have very small ears in comparison. I think elephants are very interesting. And they're quite intelligent. So, uh, somewhere down in here, I see some weeds kind of coming up over that shadow. So, instead of drying in the weeds, I'm just going to leave them out. I'm going to do the shadow, and as I come in... I'm just going to say, well, there's kind of a weed right there. I'm just going to leave it out. So without, without having to dry in all the leaves and everything, you just want to leave it out. You can blend it in, come back into it, and put in a couple things, but nobody cares about the weeds. Unless you're a botanist. There was an artist. His name was Albert Bierstadt. And uh, he was painting uh, in America, and he would take he would take photographs. And this was back in the 1850s, 1860s. And uh, then he'd go back in his studio and paint them. The interesting thing, though, is all the little plants. Botanists can go in there and go, "Oh, he painted those plants exactly the way they are." Like, I don't think I'd do that as an artist. Probably just go, eh, they're weeds. But he was he was kind of concerned about every little thing like that. I'll show you how to do those weeds with your cotton swab. When you're all done, you've loaded it and you've got lots of graphite on there. We're going to do the weeds. I'm just getting the shape of those shadows. You, and you don't want a hard line around your shadows. You want them kind of soft because the light's going to kind of turn, soften up the edges anyway. A 
a little texture into it. You just use the side of your pencil because you're going to be blending that anyway. Here's some shadows of weeds on the elephant, and I'm just going to throw this in too, because eventually I'm going to use all that stuff. Some of those little textures I put on the tusk are a little a little strong so I'm gonna just pull them out with my kneaded eraser a little more blending with the cotton swab and voila I'll have it then we're gonna be able to finish this whole drawing that's crazy I never finished a drawing So when you get into that really dark area and you're going like around the weeds, don't worry if you get some into that, that weedy area. It just makes it look like part of the leaf. You can come back in and touch up with a kneaded eraser, and that's all you need. You really don't need much more than that. This technique works really well, though, for life drying. If you're if you're doing figure studies or or you're out uh, drawing like you go to the zoo or something you're drawing animals it's fast it's a great way to draw I'm going to use my cotton swab to get some of these little wrinkles in down the leg here. Elephants are notorious for being wrinkly. So that preliminary drawing we did all, all of a sudden kind of becomes a guide for you. You can adjust it from there too. You can say, well, it wasn't in the right place. You can adjust it. But it's kind of a, kind of a nice little guide that's not too intimidating.
all this gray that's up in here, I'm going to get with my cotton swab. So don't even worry about drying it in. Unless it's really dark, then you can draw it in. But most of that is just something you can smear with your cotton swab. And then don't worry about if your wrinkles are in exactly the right place. Try to get the form so it's it's rounded. Keep your keep your lines slightly rounded. None of them are exactly level. And just a couple little wrinkles here and there. Last thing you want to do is take your kneaded eraser and go in and just pull out any little areas of light. Sometimes as we blend, we kind of overdo that a little bit. So you have to bring it back out. So you get your contrast in there. While I'm at it, I might as well get some of those bushes in there. So I'm just going to do some little dark areas uh, wherever I see bushes. Just little blotches of dark like this. Um, you just kind of look at your bushes and go, okay, I see where those darks are. You don't have to put them in exactly like they're, they are. But just little areas of dark and light. And we'll blend them out and then we'll take our kneaded eraser and throw it in there. And wow, they'll look like bushes. And you don't have to put them all in there either. Just enough that your viewer knows there are bushes out there. Little trees that, that elephants walking through or... Just enough. Just scribble them in. You can leave out little areas too, because those are the leaves that are shining from the light. That cotton swab is amazing. It really is kind of cool that it, it'll blend all that and then all that drawing that you can do with it. When you're ready for the, the little bushes, you just go into the little bushes. You can just leave little pieces hanging out up there. Those are leaves.
You can take this as far as you want it to go. Hopefully you got a pretty good looking elephant there. Sign it. So somewhere, not on the edge, but somewhere up in there is a good place to sign it. And thanks for drawing with me. Hope you have a lovely day. Remember my motto, art makes life better. It does. And hopefully, somewhere along the way, it's made your life just a little nicer.